All right, welcome back. We're back. We're back. We're back. Where's Mr. Beals? Let's do this, bro. Beals! Have fun, my bro. <laughs> See, if you are not in the comment section, I always feel like the, the conversation is not going right. Oh, boy. <laughs> I won't call me a gun talk again. After everything we die, you don't talk, man. No, no, no. See, um, you know, you always you always have something to say. Can you hear me? Hold on a second. Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay. Yeah, can Nigeria. Hear yeah. Industry. Nigeria music industry. <laughs> Record levels. <laughs> imprints. Yeah. What's your take on the record labels in Nigeria? I mean, first of all, to be quite honest with you, bro, man, it's, it's high time, yeah? We need to take responsibilities as the back-end guys, to be honest with ourselves, yeah? Because it's like our conversation has been on, okay, the artists, the artists, the artists, the artists. And I like the fact that you and uh, you and uh, Watchman call it, or uh, you and Thais, our uh, conversation was mainly about the managerial role and manager side of the of this of the business here, yeah? bro. First of all, let's educate ourselves. With starting first is, what is the meaning of a label? Because we are using this record label thing too loosely. You understand, like. We're using it too loosely. So let's first of all educate ourselves what a record label is. And the next thing is what is the role of a record label, my brother? Eh? Yeah, we've all done what we've done. Bro. It's just like you, you have your imprints. Bro, we are all indie labels. That's why we have all these mixed steps because we're not built like a label. We don't have the resources of a label. You understand? So first of all, let's yeah. scrap that word, record label. Sure you understand? Let's yeah. scrap, scrap that word, record label. Now, I mean, we have a couple of labels now in Nigeria, got so good, and all these labels actually were birthed off of the experience, uh, the, off of their past experience. For someone like, uh, let me look at it, someone like um, Jazzy now, Maven Records, yeah? Like right now, Maven Records is considered a record label. Chocolate City is considered a record label. You understand? You know why? Because they have the resources, they have the various departments that a record label requires. You understand? The AR and department is there, the management. So some of the labels might have the management department, you understand? So a lot of us are independent labels. So once we educated ourselves that, okay, yeah, we are independent labels, we are not record label, then we can start from that conversation. See, you mm. understand? So, yeah, and, and, yeah that's, that's the thing. Like, most of us, we know, we know, that's why, like, for me, I've never called myself a record label. I, I went through... I went through the channel of management because it's safer, but do I play the role of a label? Yes, I play the role of a label. You understand? So at this day and age, we shouldn't even use that word labels because that's why one of the reasons why we are confused, truth be told. Okay. Um, do you think that when an artist is being signed to a record label, yeah. bringing back the importance and the position of the record label of, of, of a manager, Mm -hmm. You know what we're talking about? I don't know if you were on the show when we're talking to DJs, when we're saying that the no, I didn't, DJs... I didn't watch them. I mean... Okay. We're saying that the DJs, if you have a DJ, for example, how what DJ Iku is to Baby Doe. Because DJ Iku has that spice. He brings on... Can you hear me? Boy, this, uh, can you can hear me, bro? Because I can barely hear you, yeah. bro. Yeah. Yeah, I can hear you. I can, can you hear me? So, DJ Iku plays yeah. a, a huge part in Davido's performance. And when DJ Iku is beh behind mm -hmm. Davido, there's a lot of things he does. 
but we forget the manager. Already, the manager takes yeah. a percentage from whatever the artist makes, right? Which some people yeah. is 10%, some 20%, depending on what the label, the artist... And I mean, yeah, depending, yeah. Depending on what the label or the artist agrees with the, the, uh, the manager. So when signing mm -hmm. contracts, so what we're saying for DJs was, yeah. if you receive, if David is receiving money, if you said I'm receiving this money, yeah. and the way an artist, the, my manager is being paid, the DJ should be paid. Yeah. So now, the manager in the equation already shows that if I book a show, I collect my percentage. But knowing that his foundation is not rooted. So my question to you is, do you think that when a, an artist is signing a contract, there should be a place for a manager? Whereby, if a manager is now employed for the artist, or the artist decides to bring in a person that he believes that this is a person that should be my manager, mm -hmm. the person's name can be imprinted in the contract saying that Mr. So 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 is your manager and he takes XXX. Do you think that should happen? I mean, not necessarily because we all have different uh, situations and unique uh, um, agreements. You understand? And I can give you one example right now. Like right now, uh, I'll do have a, um, an artist. Her name is Candy Bill, uh, Candy Bleaks, right? And this artist, Candy, is signed to, signed to Chocolate City. You understand? Signed to Chocolate City as an artist now. And this same artist have a management deal with me. You understand? The contract that she has with uh, Chocolate City has nothing to do with my services. The only thing I'm rendering is managerial services as a management. So you understand? So yeah. I, I think the contracts needs to be separated. You understand? There's a recording contract and there's a management contract. You understand? So for me, yeah. I don't think you can instill a management, I mean, in the, in the industry standard though, I don't think you can instill a management uh, um, deal inside a recording contract. So I think it's, supposed, it's basically supposed to be separated. So, so, you, so whose job should it be? The artist, mm -hmm. right? Whose job to, should it be? To the pay artist? the DJ? No, no. no the, uh, whose job should uh -huh. it be to get a manager for the artist? Is it the record label? outsourcing management to a management company or the artist getting a manager and presenting a manager to the record label and the person said which should which, which should that job be for i mean it, it can it can actually work both ways to be to, to, to be honest because uh sometimes in, um an artist can actually come to a label already with the manager you understand already with the manager that he's been that he's been working with or she's been working with you understand so now and it can be a case whereby the artist is actually just coming to to the label without a manager so it's a decision between either the label and the, and the and the artist to choose who is a, a best who is the best person for the artist you understand? And most times, I think in Nigeria, you know what happened most times in Nigeria is that the label tend to choose managers for the artist, but I don't think it's supposed to be so. It's actually supposed to be the artist to understand, like, okay, this is somebody I'm comfortable with. This is somebody that I see that can actually help manage me. You understand? So it should be a both. It should be both parties' decision. It shouldn't be a one way. I mean, uh, it shouldn't be a one way. But most most time in Nigeria, we intend to actually impose. We intend to actually impose uh, managers for the artist. And that causes some problem for 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 the for the for the for the music for the labels later on. Because the manager, the artist yeah. feels like the artist feels like. The manager that is managing me, that goes around with me, that sees the things I'm doing, is loyal to the record level. Because yeah. if there's sincerity, right, and there's honesty in yeah. our industry, I don't think an artist should be scared of who brings a manager or a label should be scared of who brings a manager. Because the thing is, if 
as managers, we need to understand something. The same way we are trying to build, um, the same way we are trying to build, uh, what's it called? Um, the same way we are trying to build our industry. Mm -hmm. I still think that it should be the same way we should build management companies and never call them record labels. Yeah, I mean, yeah. They drop, if you, they I mean, it's just like for me, like just yeah. for me, right? From yeah. day one, I've started this thing. I've never called myself a, a, a record label. You understand? I've always called my imprints management company. You understand? So, yeah. and it's high time for us to understand too, because we tend to call some management companies record labels. You understand? Yeah. Like, we should learn to separate the two. Like, there's a role for a management company and there's a role for a record label, which is part of the confusion that we have, which is the reason why I said, though, Mio, we don't have enough record labels in Nigeria. We have few labels in Nigeria, but if we know the difference between a management company and a record label, some of the problems that we actually have at hand, we won't. Hmm. Okay, so let's talk about artists, right? Yeah. And we'll come back to managers. In let me okay, let me just finish with managers, then we'll go back to um, this thing. Because I have a yeah. question here that I just feel like is a, is a proper follow-up. Yes, we blame a lot of artists for sacking managers and leaving them behind. But do you think some managers... Because, I'll give you a scenario. There's a, there are managers that go to clubs and they drink more than their artists. <laughs> there are managers that go to... <laughs> uh, trust me. Well, <laughs> there are managers that go, to, they are, they are go for shows. Right? Yeah. Bills, you know what yeah. we do now. When we get to shows, I mean, right? Of course, of course. I mean, yeah. I, okay, you, some, I, I, I would just say manager, management could be more lucrative if handled well. So, we arrive at the show. Some artists mm -hmm. don't know, some managers don't know what to do when they get to shows. When, or when they, when they arrive at an event. Some managers mm -hmm. don't understand how to read. You know that reading a, a rider to a promoter is like reading a riot act. Yeah. Now, some, some artist managers, once they get into the the location for the show they go straight into their room the first thing is they're asking the um they're asking the promoter for ego asking him for drink asking him for woman now they forget that they came with an artist the first thing to do when you arrive at the show is ask for the venue and time for sound check when you arrive at the airport, make sure that the, the, what is on the rider in terms of how many cars will pick up the artist is available. Go to your backstage and check the things that are backstage and what the artist needs and what the rider says if it is right. Take your band members to rehearsal, to, to uh, sound check, and if possible, talk to your artist to follow you to sound check so he understands the setup of the stage and where he can go and where he can't go. That's why you see a lot of artists fall on the stage because they don't like, artists don't like going for sound check. So a manager that doesn't know all of these things just believes that it's just to arrive with artists for a show and wait in the hotel till the show time, then he takes his artists to the show. Is that a manager? And how can we make these managers understand, be educated? So it's one thing wanting to educate artists. How can we educate the artists, the managers to understand their jobs? So that the artists will look, will see the value in what they are doing. Uh, first of all, to be quite honest with you, right? If someone have to educate you as a manager, you are not even supposed to be a manager at the first right. place. You understand? Like if someone will have to be telling you, educating you at this day and age of a managerial role, first of all, you are not even supposed to be a manager. You understand? Yep. Then the second thing too is like, let's not forget that a lot of the people that stumble to these managerial roles, yeah, are either people that have been with that artist coming up. It could be maybe a cousin, brother, something. So a lot of people just fall into these positions without even planning, without even thinking, I mean, without even, without even, uh, um, without a sight for the, for the position. You understand? So yeah. that's, that's, the, that's one of the problems that we have. Then the second thing is this, yeah? 
there are different and categories of managers. You understand? Yeah. You can have a business manager, then you can have a road manager. You understand? You see yeah. those roles that you're talking about, like, oh, some managers, when you get to the show, the, man, the uh, artist is looking for a boy, he's looking for Drake, he's looking for that. My brother, yeah, you know your artist. Your artist needs these things to ginger, to enter stage. You understand? But now, yeah. if no, you now... I said some, some yeah. managers are looking for it for themselves, not even for the artist, though. Oh, for themselves? Yeah. My brother, I mean, I don't know whether they do that kind of thing, you know. Trust me. Because, Bro, I mean... With, you, know, you know, say we don't travel with managers as well. You know, say some because first of all, manager, that... you, you have to be sane as a manager. Bro, there are managers that drink and they are drunk in the club. You understand? They are drunk and they leave their... Bro. You know that... Uh... Well, maybe because me, I be old school. I don't even understand. I don't know where no, they do see, that kind of thing. don't call yourself old school. You are as relevant <laughs> as anybody. See, the, the difference is this, eh? The difference between what you are saying and... The difference is this. Manager, so, you know when you went for shows then, right? Yeah. You arrived, you, you told people what to do. Yeah, you, because you, you know your role. That's what I'm saying. Exactly. Because so, you know your you role as a manager. Exactly. So you travel so with that, your So that's exactly what I was saying earlier that, bro, if someone has to tell you your role as a manager, you are not supposed to even be a manager to start with. Do it. You understand? You can go be with someone like Taye for a couple of years. You understand? To work under someone like Taye and get to know and understand the managerial role before you can start working solely with an artist one-on-one -on -one as a manager. Yeah. Mm. You right. understand? Like, because me, I know... Let, I let, me, let, me, let, me give you an, let me give you an instance. Yeah. So, I don't know if, if um, Big Entertainment is still here. So, we traveled yeah. for a show... You know, America tour is very, very stressful. East Coast, yeah. West Coast, you keep going, just trying to do shows. So we got to Houston, and I took this um, night, is it Night Quill? Yeah, Night Quill. I think, I don't know that I overdosed on it because I was really tired. Yo, Night Quill would knock you out. Is it? Yeah. So yeah, I went night, straight yeah, to the hotel. We're sitting at the um, Western Galleria. So I got into the room, I slept off. And when I was sleeping, I know that in my dream, I was already doing sound check. So they were looking for me for us to go for the show. Bro, I was knocked out because I've been walking around the club making sure that things are happening. So they've been knocking at my door and I was not opening. So I heard, guess what I heard? Police, they, so, you know, they couldn't open my door because they were knocking and knocking. They couldn't open my door. So they called the cops. Oh, yeah. So the cops came and they, when they opened the door, they said, he's here, he's here. Check him. Is he dead? So that, is he dead? But I went like, like, I stood up and I saw, I saw cops. Um, I saw cops and I was like, what's going on? They said, they've been calling me. I was not picking up. And they, <laughs> they're calling me. I was not picking up uh, because we needed to go for sound check. Now, because of how much I understood what my job was, as I was sleeping, I did do sound check for my sleep. Can you hear me? Bruce, can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. I hear you, bro. Okay. So because of that, eh, as I did sleep, I did do sound check for my sleep. I'm wired, I'm wired in a, a certain way. So when we go for shows, eh, there, are, there are people that will come to me and say, guy, you know the laugh, bro. If I'm if I'm at, if I'm walking eh, now, my face with this. I don't. You, you know how this thing is. I don't. I don't care who you are, <laughs> bro. Can you hear me? You know how you be now. Yeah. Can, can, you, see, you, can you hear me? Oh, bills. Your network is in and out, in and out, in and out. Can you hear me, bills? Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you, bro. Go ahead. Okay. okay. So, a lot of managers don't understand what it takes to actually be an artist manager. Yeah, I mean, that's, you understand? that's the truth. You understand? That is true. A, a lot of managers don't so, know. What, yeah. So, now, having looked at a, a couple of artist contracts in, the, in our industry, yeah. and having he, heard a lot of problems that have happened in our industry, 
what do you think is the solution between the artists and the labels or artists and the management companies? What do you think we can do to solve it? Actually, to be quite honest with you, right, um, I don't know. I don't have an answer to it. I'm just dead serious. Like, I don't, I don't have an answer to it because this is ongoing situations that have been happening uh, for years now. And just like what Taye said, I think the best thing for us is just to educate our artists more on the business side. You understand? Because if you understand the business, you know how to navigate towards the business. You understand? And artist development, just like how Taye was emphasizing, it, like artist development is highly important. And which is what we actually lack in, that's what we lack in our industry, the artist development. And there's no time period for artist development. Sure, you understand. You can't give it to, for some people, it might be three years. For some people, it might be four years, depending on the experience, you understand? And another thing, too, as a label, as a manager, you understand? You have all the artists that you work with are unique. Sure, you understand? All the artists that you work with are unique. So you cannot compare artists together you understand they have it's, it's a unique situation so for me oh, um i don't know because first of all we live in a country that the law is not well governed she mm. like so how can we really say okay do you believe in the nigerian court system you said you're, the legal system and let's just be honest with ourselves do you believe in the nigerian court system well I, I think for our industry, they really don't understand what we're doing. So I would, it, it would be difficult to go through a legal, legal battle like that with, with anyone in our legal system because they really don't understand what we're doing. Exactly. When our legal system doesn't even understand laws that uh, guide our industry, you understand? Yeah. So how can we even take our issues to court? You understand? Hmm. But now it's better for us to actually educate ourselves with our artists it's just for me, example, there's no artist that I work with today that as we are starting, I'm not teaching you the side of the business. Even when I do my negotiations, when I do everything that has to do with the business, I bring you in just for you to learn. I want to hear your own opinions too. I want you to be part of the negotiation behind, behind closed door when it's just you and I so that you can actually understand the business too. So it's not a matter of, yeah, you get to one level, you feel like, oh, yeah, I can do better or, or I can do better than this or, or, I'm, or I'm making moves that you don't understand. Well, if I, mm. teach, you, if I teach you, if you if you become part of the business, you have a better understanding of the business. So there will be some unnecessary issues that comes up that we won't have to be dealing with because we have time. I mean, we don't have time for unnecessary issues because you, you rightfully understand the business. And a lot of people actually come to this business with, with lack of understanding of the business. So you understand? That, and that's yeah. our problem. And, and truth be told, make we say, man, let's take responsibilities for some of the things that's happened, right? yeah? Yeah. Ubi, you and I have been in this business now for almost 15 years. So you understand? Yeah. When we started this business, we didn't know jack shit about this business. You know, not, and it's yeah. just the honest truth. But the only one thing that we had then was passion. You understand? It was just yes. passion. But within time, we've learned. You understand? We've learned to where we are today, having this conversation because of the experiences that we've had. You understand? Yeah. I'm quite sure. The first artist you had, did you, did you uh, draw up a contract? Um, no, exactly. The first three artists I had, I didn't, I didn't draw a contract <laughs> because first it was just based on, it was just based on passion. Yeah, let's all do it. It was based on passion. One of the craziest ones I worked with to be the big one of the craziest ones I worked with was Ikechuku Kills, Ex exactly. But now, because of the time and uh, the years that we've put in, now we've grown to understand the business better. You understand? So, this whole Artists, one artist is living on uh, one artist is living record label. One artist, it's all just lack of understanding the business because you can actually still be in the same label and still break bread if you understand the business. 
You know what I mean? And, and, and for the most part, all the artists that have left, how many of them have, have we seen become successful after the left, after the league? Hmm. You know what I mean? I mean? You have to look at it like that. Like, how many of them have become successful? Sorry for you. Jay, you, you understand? So, uh, at, the, at the end of the day, it's just we just need to educate ourselves, both the artists, both the, both okay. the, the label. Because I ask you a question, eh? And I want to know, I want to see what your answer will be. Because I've been trying to ask myself that question until today I've not been able to get an answer. Leave me, I want to go. Leave me, I want to go. Let me go. Let me go. And then the artist leaves the record label. Mm -hmm. And then the career goes this way. So now that you have your career in your hands, yeah? Mm -hmm. Now that you have your career in your hands, right? Mm -hmm. Why can artists, when they leave record labels, why can they do the things that they believe that they can do, leaving the structure that they were, they were um, planted on? They, now, what is the problem? Is it that they just decided not to, to perform again, or is it structure that is haunting them? One. Yeah. Yeah. Why do you think oh, artists leave labels and structures and they don't, they don't function again? I mean, because you got to understand something, yeah? Most of these artists, yeah, when they come to you, for example, this is how they come to you. You see the level where this what are they now, yeah? yeah? Some of them, they come to you at this level. And you now, at the back end, your work is to get this water filled to the top, yeah? And now they get to the top. They, you fill their water because they come to you empty like this, right? You now fill their top to this level. You understand? So when they get to this le level, it's just human nature. They now start to question, do I even need these people? Do I really hmm. even need these people? Forgetting that when they came to you, they came empty. And you have to fill the empty cup to become full. And when the empty cup becomes full, what happens? It becomes valuable. You understand? But there's engine behind that is working. You understand? So now, for, for the most part, some of them is out of, I mean, it's lack of knowledge. You understand? It's lack of yeah. knowledge. You see borderline to artist development, just like what Tayin was saying, yeah? If you understand the business and you know how valuable your team is, because check, check globally now, is there any superstar without a solid team behind them? Even when an artist leaves to go start their own label, who do you think is running it? There are people behind that you and I don't know, just like the job of you and I, you understand? But because of the lack of understanding the business, they think, oh, yeah, I don't need this person. I can go start my own label. Let me go start my own. And, 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 and sometimes they go... The ones that really understand the business, it works. And the ones that don't know, they find out that, ah, um, this thing will be an easy job. The way, For example, you, you, you heard the example that Taye gave that with uh, Yemi, when the, the money was in the company's account and your, Yemi was feeling some type of way and they created another account, like, okay, you, handle this. And she found out that, ah, oh, Omar, this job no be easy job for me to be handling the account. I'm thinking about the creative side. Now I'm thinking about the business side. It's too much for me. Now she understands that I need these people for various reasons. I can't do this thing alone. So, I mean, it's just lack of, un lack of understanding the business. You can, re you can restructure your contract. Where you understand? You can restructure your contract whereby you are starting your own label. Nobody will not support you to start your own label. You understand? For example, now, let me give you an example. And I'm just going to call it Spade a Spade. Look at one day call, yeah? When he left Maven, he started what? Um, um, Black Magic. You understand? Black Diamond. Label, um, Black Diamond. You understand? And look at um, our own situation with Jazzy, you understand? Then when I had 323 with Tiwa, you understand? And for me, I remember at that time, 
Because we had already started what we were doing before Maven even started. And we came. And because I understood the power of partnership, likewise those T were, you understand? So that's why we came. So now one day is here. We are coming in because we see that you have something over here that we need. And now one day is here, feeling like, okay, you know what? I want to go do this thing by myself. I'm not getting treated right for whatever reason. You understand? I'm not getting treated right. Maybe it feels that it's not valuable enough for whatever reason. And for me, I remember that time, I kind of uh, um, advised his manager. I was like, guys, you don't have to leave. What you need to do is now restructure your agreement. One day can start Black Diamond on that Maven record and be using the resources that Maven record have. Why he's trying to start his own label just like cash money, young money, cash money. You understand? The, oh, look at cash money started, yeah? At some point, Liu Wing started young money. And he didn't leave cash money. They just restructured the business. He was still doing business under cash money. You understand? After cash money, Drake came. Drake started what? OVO. Under YMCMB without going anywhere. And everybody knows their role. You understand? And everybody is breaking bread. And this business is about partnership. You cannot do it alone, bro. Mm. It's a partnership business. So now, since one day left now, starting to do um, Black Diamond, what has happened, bro? And it's just, I'm just, because we are all learning here, yeah, so no, so it, 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 it's like a we law. Are there are case studies here. here. You understand? You could have stayed with Maven, restructured. This is what I want. Get your lawyers to fight. And trust me, Jazzy is not stupid too. Jazzy knows that, okay, you know what? Why would I let one day go when we can all still be here and I can help him strengthen? And it will be joy for, for Jazzy to see that my artists have become a businessman now too. And that's what people, that's what David is doing, that people don't understand what David is doing. I've heard you guys say, oh yeah, David signed artists and, 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 oh, he's not making money from the artist. But do you know the value that this artist has given DMW that money cannot replace? David has that understanding, like, okay, you know what? These guys, they need help. I'm going to help them without. But in return, what are we building? We're building a unit, a force. And that's valuable. If that's valuable enough to David, he will continue to do it. And that's how, and that's working for them. And they're not all working together. They're all working together. So you just find your own unique situations and, and ways to just make it happen. And we all should learn how to partner. You understand? Because I could have gone and do that thing alone myself at that time. Because I know a lot of people were telling me that, ah, T.Y. is big now. Why do you need Jazzy? Why do you need Maven? And I'm looking at them like, bro, the people that I learned this business from, from the Rockefeller to Bad Boy, they've always been somebody bigger that they were leaning on. You understand? It was just like Dev Jam, Rockefeller Dev Jam. You understand? Bad Boy, uh, um, I think, I believe Bad Boy Dev, Dev Jam. And you look at all these imprints, even Cash Money Universal, they have a bigger label. And when Jazzy started, Jazzy started Maven, and I know the resources that he had. And now I have the opportunity to work with the biggest producer in Africa. You understand? And for me, I thought about it like, ah, uh, ah, or more. She, make I collect this thing. I'll be make I not do this thing. Do I really need this guy? People were really talking to my ears like, you don't need him. You don't need him. You don't need him. See, yeah, and the band just broke up. This, that, that, that. But for me, as a smart businessman, I just look at it like, oh, more. Imagine if me and Jazzy form Voltron together. Sorry, I lost. Um, Bills, we lost you.
we lost two bills. Please, bills, if you are still there, we need to to um. Immediately after Bills, we'll have Mr. Easy. I'm very, very much proud of Mr. Easy. Trust me. Dating back in our days in Ghana. So he's now my... He's now someone I learned, learned a lot of things from, but he doesn't know. We're studying him. If someone said my network is a shake at all. You just said I didn't know. My network is a shake. Oh. Bills, where are you? What, what happened to Bills' phone? Sorry, my, my older brother is on Instagram Live right now. He, he brought me to Lagos. I lived with him till I was able to do what I am doing today. So, you know, just send some love to my, my older brother. He's on Instagram Live. I wonder what he's doing on Instagram. Like he's, he's not used to all these social media things. <laughs> Thank you so much for the opportunity to come to Lagos, man. To live my dream. I really appreciate you. Bills. Yeah, yeah sorry, so, man. So you see, one thing you have done today is you've helped us actually knock on the partnership from the three the SSP model we're trying to build for our industry, which is a system structures and partnership. Now, do you know, I was one of the people that felt like, what did TB one use Maven do? TY is already big. But guess what? The force with Maven made you guys stronger and better. And made the artists bigger. Made the artists bigger. I remember one time, because, because another thing, that's one thing you need to, a lot of managers need to actually take note to. It's not about you. It's about the artist. Mm. You understand? It's not about you. It's about the artist. And every decision that I'm going to make will not be my personal take. It's, okay, what is best for this artist? You understand? Yeah. Then another thing, too, that we need to take note is that we don't have to be friends to do business. So people no, get don't. a bit twisted. Sign contract as enemies and work friends. as friends. My brother, me and Jazzy, we respect each other. We love each other. Me and Jazzy are not best friends, my brother. But have we done business? Can we still do business? What did Jazzy like? Not what did me I like. You understand? Me, I like yeah. to go play basketball, go to the gym. Jazzy like to play video game, chill. You understand? So when it comes to that friendship thing that we can really have, like maybe hang out together or do certain things in common, we don't have it. What me, what interests me does not interest him. You understand? But what, what common interest and common ground do we have? Business. And our respect and love is based on business. So we don't have to be friends to do business. That's where a lot of people are getting it twisted up at too. We don't have to be friends to do business. Hmm. Sure, you, sure you understand. So, so once we, yeah. So do you think that, uh, yeah, talking about one day call, mm -hmm. do you think that if do you think that it would be the right thing right now for someone like one day call to take Black Diamond and have a sit down with Don Jazzy and say, hey, listen, Jazzy, hey, I understand what life is right now. I have Black Diamond. I'm still one of the most talented artists that has ever hit the face of Nigeria, of Africa. Let's do business. You think that you think that that would be something that can work? Oh, bro, I would love that. If everything, if everything is right, you understand? If everything is right, bro, I would love that because that would be good for the industry. That would be good for us. That would be good for the cause of why we are here. Because a lot of these younger artists look up to one day. Don't forget, yep. a lot of from the Wizkid to David to every art, every younger artist that has come after one day, they all look up to one day. So imagine if one day has gotten it right on the business side that time. Like, okay, you know what? I'm not going to leave Maven Records, but I'm going to make sure Maven Records gives me everything I want. 
Now, I'm not one day from more it. You understand? I'm not the one day go from more it. So my value as one day go now has changed from more it. So now let's sit down. Let's talk. My brother, let's talk. You know, say, Baba, you know, say my value as one day. And Jazzy too. Jazzy has been on here now. Jazzy is a reasonable businessman. Yeah. Instead of go look and say, okay, you know, one day you are saying the truth, my brother. Let's structure this thing. Now you own your own company. Your company is going to be under Maven Records. So it's going to be Maven, uh, it's going to be uh, Black Diamond, Maven Records. So now one day two can sign any artist. Do you know automatically any artist that one day is signing is automatically a Maven Record artist? Because that artist is going to enjoy the resources and the structure that Maven Records have. So imagine if one day has made that move, then every other artist that are coming up will look at one day's structure and model and follow it. That's why we need to, like, we don't, we don't understand, like, that's, I mean, for me, well, I don't know if that thing can happen, but if that kind of thing can happen in this day and age, for one day to come back as... Because black, one day is so much 100% records, in tune with the new music that is going on. Every time one day drops a song, you would think, say, nah, you would think, say, person just, person they study the industry, so what is the guy that studies the industry and drops music? And yeah, the, but you see, the, that's the thing. That, but that's the thing now is that he, he, that's the thing. One day is music. One day is not business, bro. Mm. Let's be frank. One day is music. One day is not business. Send me now. Make I, make I wake up today now and say, I won't begin singing. Don't be crazy. They worry me. No, make mm. I call you now and say, uh, bro. I won't begin single. I didn't drop my single tomorrow. Don't be crazy. They worry me so. You go future me now. You go blow. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> we'll make money from streaming. Perform. <laughs> we'll be there. We'll be whiskey. We'll be there. Now my children first. Now my children go first. Now my children go first. Tell me, say, Daddy, are you okay? <laughs> are you okay, Daddy? <laughs> <laughs> so um, now, uh, let's, let's, let's now understand what our role is what is our strength, what is our stretches. You understand? Mm -hmm. It's just like me now. I know my strength. That's why no artist feel use me doing and God, no go lie to you. Because I know my value, bro. Mm -hmm. And that's where it comes as a manager, bro. Right now, I know they go into anything that I cannot walk away from. Bro, I can easily walk away from any artist right now. Because at the end of the day, I know I'm not coming to you empty handed. You are gonna to come to me empty. And I know it's my job is to fill this empty cup for you. Show you understand? Know Jazzy yeah, yeah, Jazzy say one day has a partnership already. Leave Jazzy. Jazzy, 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 Jazzy said one day has. Oh, okay, fine, fine. Jazzy, okay, then fine. Let me ask. What question. Jazzy? What would we love to wait. see? Jazzy, wait. Let me, have... let me let me answer. Let me now answer, and that's a good thing too. Yeah. Jazzy said uh, one day one day has a partner now, right? Good thing. But does the partner understand music business? That's another question. Mm. We need to, it's not about having a partner. The partner he has now, does that partner understand the music business, brother? Let's be frank with ourselves now. Do you know how many Yahoo boys have come to me with hundreds of millions naira for them to come and invest or for them to start a label? And bro, yeah, the money seems, especially now, bro. Now, when I don't get money, this kind of money come to me. Oh. When I did down, where I don't get money. Imagine, say, you don't get money. You know, you know what happened to me now. Imagine, say, I don't get money. Yeah. But say, when they offer me 100 million, say, they won't invest in me, in my company. They won't, uh, or they won't start company. They won't bring like 200 million naira. Bro, the money they tempted. But well, because of the understanding that I have for this business and the passion and the love that comes for this business first, you know what I did? I said no. Because I know where these people are coming from. They are coming from the mindset of, ah, I'm a record label owner. I'm a record label owner. And they are coming from the mindset of, oh, oh. Um, so, um, so um, Bills, Bills yeah. let me pause you for a bit, right? Yeah. Jazzy just said, that they understand music business, but not the Nigerian music business. So you can imagine that Wandy has his partner and then takes the partner to Jazzy with the partnership between Jazzy, Wandy, and Wandy's partner. Jazzy understands Nigerian music industry. You can imagine the fire that this that will cause. 
Yeah, I mean, that is the course. partnership that yeah. we're talking about. Yeah, of course. That's the partnership we're talking about. It's just for example now. Shebi, I told you earlier, say, I'll do now. As Omo, if you hear this girl, her name is Candy Blakes, man. Fire. Fire. This girl, bad. Don't, um, um, Chocolate City is a record label, yeah? You understand? It's a record label. So between Chocolate City now and the artists, they look together like, okay, you know what? We want a separate entity to manage this girl. That's what the artists want. That's what the label wants. And they came to me like, okay, Bills, we want you for this job. You understand? Now, I'm on that job. It's a partnership. And that now is Bills Vision, Chocolate City on Candy's, uh, Candy Blake's project. You understand? It's still partnership and everybody has their role to play. And because because how do understand this business? I understand this business. Now we're able to come together on the project to work together. And that's what this our industry needs more. Everybody won't do their thing. Everybody won't be record label owner. Everybody won't be manager. No, bro. But let me ask you this, Ubi. Do you know we you and I now can manage one artist together? Do you believe yeah, that? Yeah, definitely. See, somebody just said somebody just uh, said something. Um Someone just said something here, and that is what has killed us as an industry. When I said, um, when I said that the Wande Co's situation between Wande Co, Jazzy, and wherever his partner is, will be the maddest, will be a mad collaboration. Someone just said the split will be three ways. Now, people understanding that, one thing I want to let people understand about business that I have understood is. It's not how the money is shared. It's how successful the transaction is. Do you understand? So yeah. most times, a lot of uh, artists leave record labels because of thinking that they are going to go okay. Okay. and let take me, the full 100% share. Let me, now, let, me now ask, let me answer that to you, yeah? I beg, yeah? Like, say, 323, three, before we join Maven Records, yeah? Imagine, say, 323 three now. Um, say, we they make, we they make, uh, 50 million naira per annum, you understand? And now that's 100 percent to 100 percent to to um to um to three three. Three. Yeah. Mm. So can not imagine now say we go fee make 40 percent of 500 million naira working with Maven Records. Is this smart for me to say because I don't want to share anything? I won't keep. Uh, don't uh, forget to. to Jazzy has Jazzy has his contacts. He has his reach. He has the people that you know say because of exactly. your Jazzy. Let me. You know. Do you understand? So you is, it, is, it, is, this smart, is this smart? smart for me? Know? Yeah. To I make, get you. To make more with a smaller percentage that would be more yeah. than if I'm doing it by myself, bro. Yeah. Word. So at the end of the day, let's educate ourselves on this partnership. We we don't have to always because every, what everybody wants to now. Oh, I have a record label. Oh, three to three. Oh, build it. Oh, um, will be as on bro. We can break bread together. That's the name of the yep. business. Break bread together. I had, I had a conversation yesterday about this partnership thing, and I said, see, I don't think I'm at that place again in my life where I want to run a record label alone. I have a, a very senior sister oh, no, here. Sorry, and, sorry, yeah. sorry. A person just asks one, just, I just see one question. A person just say, oh, ask uh, waiting um, Jazzy do to one day. My brother, you see one of the problems for Nigeria. That's why our country no even a go better than what it is here. Now say when they put emotion and sentiment and cultural bullshit for how we do business. You understand? Mm -hmm. Now, first of all, Jazzy, I think, understands that my artist is diamond to me. You understand? And is valuable to me. You understand? Because I heard him on the last show. Yeah. From, from what he said. Sure, you understand? And now, right, the artist to yourself, you know that, okay, you are a partner to this label because you understand the business share you understand 
Fuck emotions, bro. Fuck say, oh, a bon baba, a bon baba. Wait till they bring to the table. Jazzy is bringing something to the table. Black Diamond one day is bringing something to the table. You understand? Let's put emotions aside of how you feel about Jazzy or how Jazzy feels about one day. Let's handle business. My brother, I'm telling you with facts, till real facts. Say, if to say, nobody knows tomorrow, like they say, but me, I still just believe, say, at that time, bro, at that time, you understand? If one day stayed, bro, it could have been bigger than what it is now, bro. Let's call it spade a spade. And let's encourage each other. Let's encourage these artists that you don't have to leave. Find a way to restructure your business. So there will be more money coming. Because if you go do it yourself, my brother, you know easy to do it yourself. No could tell them the truth. All this English grammar where they speak now. How many artists don't come up for the label? Go do things themselves. Uh, 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 like example, people will say, oh, whiskey. Yeah, great whiskey. And not forget that whiskey came from a very solid background. That's Banky and Shego de Murray. These are businessmen. And he's also smart enough to, to have learned from this guy. And he worked well for whiskey because whiskey at that time was crossing over internationally. So now he hired people in London, people in, in the US that are working for him. That's why it seemed like, oh, whiskey did it, it was so easy. There was, was a structure that he, he relied on. Huh? There was a structure he relied on. Yeah, there's a, there was a structure he relied on. Sure, you understand. So now, you one day now, it's like, okay, um, whiskey don't do it, but no, they use another person. Watch, take, check your own time. That's part of our problem, bro. Mm -hmm. We don't use another man. Watch, take, check our own time. Now, check your own time. Like, okay, what time is it right here? Or, okay, it's one day called Black Diamond's time. And, and, and not to forget, before I, you get one thing I actually want to say to you, let's believe in our mm. record labels that are starting, that we are starting to have in Nigeria. You know why? Eh? I was having this, I was having this um, 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 conversation uh, with someone the other day that there was one day I posted, I posted something. You know what I mean? When I they talk, people, they always misunderstand what they are talk. I know I'm a very misunderstood person. So it's okay. That day, I posted Jazzy's picture. And I said something that, um, why would I go and sign with an international label when I have a record label that Maven Records in my country? Some people might look at it like, hey, waiting this one, they talk. Waiting this one, they talk. My brother, I beg, more could pick all the big names. We don't sign with international record labels, so make you come pick Rema. But now Yankee a day, oh. me I know what they go on internationally here. Some people feel they like so now for there with pictures and all this bullshit, whether they come this side, come do. My brother, Remy, I mean, uh, my bad, Rema, Rema is as big as any other artist we don't sign with Universal or all these labels here. Do you believe that? Word. Yeah. And, and, he, and he probably, Rema probably has a better deal than some of these artists that are signed to international labels. Yeah. Because one of the things that we intend to do now is like, oh, oh, I'm signed to Universal, I'm signed to Sony, I'm signed to this, I'm signed to that. My brother, eh? We don't deal where now, nobody say we need the olden days way of distributing our music. If you say that the olden day ways of distributing our music, we say with a sell CD, it did different. Now, not digital, bro. Show you understand? Not digital. The numbers are there. The facts are the there. The numbers are there. Is Rema not doing features with Yankee artists? Is Rema not getting production from Yankee producers? Producer. The highest thing, if 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 um if Maven won't do anything, they won't do now. Bro, maybe if you go Times Square, maybe if you go Times Square, make them, make them hire, or uh, make them, or uh, make them, you see that Times Square billboard? Then if you go rent that Times Square billboard directly themselves, pay for them, put them an album for Times Square without nobody. Because what is this, what is this uh, labels, what are they doing for us? My brother, it's a, it's a, it's a modern day 
slavery. Bro, I want to tell you something. I want to say yeah. something. One thing I would say that has changed a lot about you over the years is that you, you, you respect people more now and you know that you don't take anybody for granted. I'll tell you something. We're having a conversation, you and I, a long, sometime last year or early this year. And you said something to me about Tega. You said, as, you, as people that have been in the industry, there's a lot we need to learn from Tega. And I asked you, I, I, I said to you, please explain. And you made something that today, I'll tell you that there, eh, Jazzy, someone like Tega in the, in, around Jazzy, right, is one guy that is very, very, very smart. And you gave him that, bro, and you, you opened, yeah, you opened my eyes a lot to who Tega is and what Tega is doing. Do I can see, that's why but, Jazzy can be on TikTok all day, bro. Yeah, so, so do you understand what I'm saying? Tega. Structure, systems, partnerships. Tega sits down. You, to, you said to me, say, Ubi, see Tega, there's a lot of things we need to learn from him because we might think that we came into the industry before Tega, but Tega is currently doing things. You understand? Because he, Tega is updating, his, updating himself every day because the things that he's handling are current. And we ha remember, we had that... Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the guy is laughing. We had that conversation, and a lot of us today, more come up pride. We are looking at what Tega is currently doing, and updating our um, updating ourselves because Tega is currently running in a record label that is has the structure global, and is currently it's doing it. Maybe global, maybe global, and they, it's called maybe global, but they are maybe global in Nigeria, Lagos, Nigeria. Yeah. Just like yeah. you have Universal located in Los Angeles. It's just area, yeah. it's just different country. Yeah. So he's currently doing that and yeah. where he, he's succeeding in it and he has, you know, do you, you understand what I'm saying? It didn't like me, you go to artists with, um, do collab with artists where I get big song now. That's how Tega is to us. Oh, yeah. Because Tega is currently practicing that shit and we need to always yeah. look at him and say, guy, what's this guy doing? And learn. But some people go feel saying a pride. Bro, well, you these see, days I call everybody. But about this thing, how did they take Duam? I pick up that phone and call. How do they do this thing? Tell me this one, this one, this one. How did they take Duam? Because I because need to always need to update learn. myself. You're There's no pride in that. Learn. Like you need to learn. You just like for example, I, I want to really say thank you to you, yeah, for creating this platform, bro. Within last year to uh, from last year to this year, bro, let me know how much money we I don't spend for crash courses, music business crash courses. Yeah, are they come this conversation? They come watch people, bro. You know the kind of things where I don't learn from here. We be say, you know how much I will go pay for class. You say I sit down for class, can't they learn? We be say a day year, I go just day year, just a watch, especially like someone like Miss Udua, bro. Someone like I do. I just day year, just a learn. I just they write them down. Because I know say if I say I go class, I go go See, pay for them. My book, I, my, now, now play shit that they use. Because I, I want the lift on like this. So we're going to be cut out now. Um, immediately after, um, after we come on, I'll take you to round up your, your thing in, in, uh, in five minutes. And then Mr. Easy has been waiting. Let's take on Mr. Easy to round oh, up the session. Somebody